So thank you all for being here today and thank you for the marvellous opportunity to be here and to talk about Kuhn Tech. Kuhn is the Scots Gaelic word for ocean, for sea. So we're all about technology from the ocean and it's not a spell mistake, it's Kuhn Middelfaltje, where we come from. We're a blue biotech company and we have a circular economy solution. And put as simply as possible, what we do is we take the bits of scampi that you don't want to eat and we create antimicrobial compostable food packaging and our aim is to extend the shelf life of fresh fish by about 48 hours. And we can do that because there's a natural biopolymer within the shells of crustaceans and crabs, lobsters, even in bits of cuttlefish and in mushrooms in various different places called chitin. It's the second most naturally occurring, abundant, naturally occurring biopolymer in the world. And we can extract that from the waste of the fisheries industry and we can use that to create packaging. That's our packaging around some salmon. It's fully home compostable, including the glue. We've been talking about, and everybody has been very passionate about this morning, is the realisation that as humans we've been almost asleep for the last 50 or 60 years. We have been loving the convenience of plastic. We love the durability of plastic, but we haven't quite wrapped our heads around the inappropriateness of taking something which has been designed to live and last for 400 years or even a thousand years and use it for a single time, a single use purpose. It's just daft. And we've done all of that in the way that humans do. We haven't thought it through to the final bits. We've done it with nuclear fuel and things like that as well. Great, wonderful, fast, easy power, but what we're going to do with the waste? And we're suddenly realizing plastic has got that same problem. And the one thing that nobody has yet mentioned today is the problem of microplastic. We talk about plastics getting into the ocean and we're all naturally very scared about that, but the stuff that's already there is breaking down. It disintegrates into smaller and smaller pieces, but it does not disappear. So we have a problem and we are literally creaking under the weight of our own waste. Combined with that, the other, I think, in my own view, big problem of the world is food waste. A third of the food that we produce in the Western world is wasted. Some of that happens between the farm and the shop. Some of it happens after we take it home. But we are some of the wealthier nations of the world. And we are having people in our own nation starve malnutrition because they can't afford food properly, and yet we're sticking a lot of it in the bin at the end of the day. We need to catch a grip. Kuhntek believes that the way that we can go about this and make a really important impact is to combine those two problems. Because the waste management issue around dealing with food packaging is enormous. It's not just about encouraging people to recycle. It's not just about encouraging people to be careful about what they're buying and trying to reduce the plastic content. You know, it, the problem is that we're lazy. Even if we do have recycling opportunities available to us, we don't always have the time or the inclination to to wash containers out to ensure that they can be recycled and they don't just default to landfill. We need to have a wide as possible infrastructure. And I mean, wide as in the whole of the EU. You know, at the moment in Scotland, you've got different colored recycling opportunities or methodologies, depending on which council area you're in. It does not help to actually have that fragmented approach. We have to have a global approach to how we deal with the waste of food and of food packaging.
but it also needs to be practical. So my challenge is to try and get the whole of the world to understand the need for food packaging to be compostable. We cannot police for the wind grabbing a sandwich wrapper from your hand and taking it off down the street. But we can limit the damage or negate the damage that that wrapper will have when it escapes. And Kuntech is going about that, not because we're some crazy bunch of scientists, although Jimmy does understand we are a crazy bunch of scientists, but because we've got a plan. You know, we, we know that chitin exists. It's, it's around us, it's everywhere. It's even in insects and, and in, in mushrooms. If, if you don't have a backbone, what you will have is likely to be chitin giving you strength and shape. It's been known about for 200 years. There's already 3,000 industrial applications of chitin and chitazan. It's used in seed coatings to try and produce, uh, prevent fungal problems with seed storage. It's used in the clarification of wine. It's used in wound dressings. It's used in hairspray. It's around you. you it is used. But a lot of the chitin and chitazan that is created around the world comes from chemical extraction sources. And those costs in electricity and in waste management of those processes mean that in and around Ireland and the UK, although we have an abundance of waste from fisheries, which provides the raw material, it hasn't been economically viable to create a company to actually do that extraction process. So when I was getting involved with Kuantech and getting it started up, that was the problem that we started with. If you can't do this by chemistry, how can we do it and create an economically viable, but also an environmentally sustainable business? So that's what we're about. We have decided to revolutionize the process. And we do that through fermentation. We do that in a way that very gently extracts the chitin from the shells. And that actually gives us a higher quality chitin. And because we're taking waste that has originated in the beautiful pure waters of the North Atlantic, we have a very high quality and high purity product. And we are using that to develop compostable antimicrobial food packaging. That means that it isn't going to break down into microplastic. What we produce is something that can be reabsorbed into the world, into the natural resources of the world. So we are genuinely doing our best to tackle plastic pollution and food waste at the same time. And we're getting there. We've only been going two and a half years. So these things as development, much as we'd all love to be able to run faster, it does take time. But we've got to the stage where we've got prototypes of home compostable, packaging, and we have been selected by Waitrose to work with them to try and develop that into a finalized product, which they're going to put around the Duchy of Cornwall organic smoked salmon range in the first instance. And we were honored to be able to present that to Prince Charles, who, for all his wackiness in other ways, has always been a stalwart person of environmental issues. And we were very pleased to be able to do that. So, just as sort of the take home messages, going back to sort of old school, what do you do at the end of a presentation? What we believe and what we think has been discussed here today, but I think that it really is what we stand for as well, is that industry needs to do things differently. We need to learn from the past mistakes. We need to not be short sighted. We need to be long term about what we're doing, how we're doing it, and we need to do that in such a way as profit isn't king. It's about the environment, it's about the natural resources, and that includes the people that work within our industries. We need to be looking at circular economy solutions, not just for the health of the ocean, but for all businesses. And we need to be using more examples of what Kuantec are doing, using food waste to create food waste. It's beautifully circular. We need to be harmonious about what we're doing. 
Yes, business always needs to be economically viable, but we do need to actually think things through to the final resting place and the final disposal of our products. And we need to be working with organizations that have that vision and mission in order to invest, in order to build and grow that economy in such a different way. It'll be interesting to see how it develops over time and how things change. But many thanks for your attention this morning.